What's up, gentlemen? I'm on the streets of New York City in the fall of 2018, and uh, by some amazing coincidence, two of my favorite perverts and friends, uh, well, ex pervert. <laughs> I retire, you know? Just retire. He's seen it all. The ex, the artist formerly known as Slash A Day Game and John Keegan. We've been in this industry for over 10 years. And uh, we were talking the other night about our origin stories and how we all met, which there's some funny, uh, funny anecdotes. Uh, and realized that at, at around the 2006, 7, 8 ish mark, uh, that all three of us were in different places in different in parts of the world, independently coming up with free electricity, I mean, day game. And uh, in, in, its, in its kind of natural form, all, all independently, not being in contact with each other, not having any like real mentors or anything like that. Uh, and then went on these separate journeys, which eventually led us to combine our forces many years later. Uh, so before we get into that origin story, Sasha, what's been going on with you lately? Uh, well, lately uh, I've taken my evolution to the next level. And uh, I just realized that uh, happiness comes from being uh, complete in many areas. So health, wealth, relationships, finding your purpose in life, doing what you're here to do, doing what you came to the planet to do. So I've been working on uh, the Infinite Man Summit and working with men, just going a lot deeper, you know, because just getting it handled in relationships wasn't enough. I'm obsessive and I had to go all the way. So I've been working on that, working on my spiritual journey. And uh, yeah, just uh, working on myself, to be honest. Which has been a, like a big 180 for you. Is 180 where you change directions? 180 is when you, <laughs> when you change directions. Sometimes like, you did a big 360 and like, so you didn't do anything? No, 180. Uh, yeah, yeah, 360. Hey, actually I do that for the day game. Hey ladies, what's up? When we first met you, you were, literally we couldn't have walked down this street and had a conversation. That's right, that's right. We would have talked to every Pretty female. girl, I would have to talk to her. Yeah, hello. The first time you guys came and stayed at my house, at the time I had a girlfriend, you guys came and stayed with me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, she had never seen me uh, do anything like approach a girl. She, all yeah. she saw you do was make smoothies and be a nice guy. Yeah, and then she knew I coached. But then Sasha came and we walked out our door and literally in one block, he talked to 10 girls right in front of her. That's how <laughs> crazy like, he was what is about he, it. What is What's going on? Is this what my boyfriend does? Yeah. I was like, no, no, he doesn't do it. He taught me, no. I remember that first time, like that was down and out in New York times back then, because it was like, I think we were teaching on one of your workshops. Right. And I was like, Sasha, you organized some accommodation? You're like, yeah, yeah, of course. We're gonna crash with my buddy, John Keegan. I'm like, I know John Keegan. Okay, cool. And then crashing with you meant like, you're on your bed and your girlfriend's <laughs> yeah. in your bed because that's where you live with your girlfriend yeah. usually and, yeah. and you usually don't have all your friends in the same room no. i mean you know <laughs> back in like the 1800s or something maybe you did but uh no but then you had me and sasha sleeping like a small wall oh, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I I basically like fun. like a transparent wall and then just another <laughs> bed shoved in a tiny little room and you guys are right in there yeah. And then, uh, well, Sasha pitched it as, I'm just gonna be, we're just gonna be there for a day or two. There was yes, this, yes. What were those sounds? This girl crying every night. I don't know what that was. It was really weird. Sasha and I met in London in 2011. I saw some videos of him beforehand, and he was the only guy on the internet at the time who was doing pickup and funny. Uh, and nice lenses as, at the same time. I remember like, whoa, it looks like a movie. Uh, and you're very amusing, so I thought if I ever get the chance, I'll talk to him. And then in 2011, I went to speak at the 21 convention in Langdang. I was in a very bad mood, very depressed. Business was bad, and I thought if I go to this convention, maybe it'll save my business. And it did, but not in the way I thought. Yeah. Um, and then you were there. That's right. Yeah, I saw. Uh, I, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know too much about James. I'd actually seen him years before with another guy he was working with and I saw him do a talk and let's just say I wasn't too impressed at the time. But when I saw him in 2011 uh, in London, he did a really, really good talk and he, I could tell he really knew what he was talking about and I was like, oh, this guy's good. I can, I can see how this guy would get chicks. So I'm gonna talk to him and I came up to him all excited like, ah, you love your talk, it's really good, ah! And he just kind of looked at me like, eh, thanks. He was in a kind of like a pit, like a, he was, I think he was going through like a semi-depression slash, and he's normally stoic, so you add those together, he's like, eh. But, I was trying uh, to be friendly, but that was the best I could yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too good. But yeah, but then that, that's it. So we, we just uh, became friends then, and the rest is, uh, as you say, history. It's funny how we did even cross paths earlier, that you came to, when he was talking about uh, my original business partner and I pulled off some very dodgy uh, lair talk in London mm -hmm. that he, my, my partner had organized. He's like, dude, we're going to do two days of content. I'm like, we don't have two days of content. He's like, I, I remember him saying, we'll scrape the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> I was like, right. 
We're doing a bit of the old scrapo, are we? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's right. You you just happened to cross paths like it's yeah, like yeah. like there the early bass player of. I came in. This was like 2000, oh, like I don't know, 2008ish, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And I came in and it was in uh, around near Leicester Square in the center of London. I just came in and I hung out a bit and I was like, man, this isn't very good. I don't. These guys are. He was up there a while. I remember I was like, this is BS, and I just left. He was good at waffling and raging. He was a waffler, yeah. yeah. So yeah, then uh, I I was staying with a fan somewhere out in the suburbs, and then I chatted with Sasha, and he said, why don't you come and sleep on my couch? And I preferred that idea, so I went over, and it was kind of like walking into this alternative reality, because at the same time, I was living in a house with five dudes, Liam and a bunch of guys, and everyone always sat around in their underwear, and every business meeting was like 80% jokes and then 20% business. And then I rocked up to your house and you had the exact same thing going on. A bunch of dudes in underpants kind of getting their shit together gradually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I felt quite at home. So, yeah, it's beautiful. You got a tea? I got a tea. Okay, so this is the first of what many of John Keegan's teas. Yes, beginning this is of how the you, day. This is, this is the John Keegan system for exploring New York City. You have a tea every two miles. Yeah. And, uh, and then you just roll with it. This lady looking at us in the window, she keeps like doing her makeup and then staring over. Now she like oh, looked yeah. away. Oh, I don't know where she went. Gone. Hey. Hey, well, we saw you doing your makeup. <laughs> I'm trying to get ready for this. What's day. going on here? Is there like a big photo shoot in here or something? No, we're not open yet. And like, I feel like shit, so I'm trying to like. Oh Make really? Not feel like Why do you feel like you look so adorable? I have a cold. Oh and really? Yeah. I've been been off in like six days. And so this <laughs> so, is like day six. Yes. Yeah. What is day game? Day game. Well, like what many of these funny things in seduction, it's just putting a name on something that people who are social and know how to communicate have done for eons. We didn't invent day game. The idea of a man looking at or speaking at a woman in the daytime is not our invention. Uh, but coming out of the, the early days of formalized seduction, which was the mystery method stuff and you know, hypnotizing girls into bed and lots of club stuff, and doing fan of funny tricks and trying to convince them that you It was considered a revolution. <laughs> Just coming, no booze, no nothing. I'm an artist. What kind of painting? Pick up artist. At Just time, walk up to girl, they're scary. pretty. Do you want to be my girlfriend? Unbelievable. Uh, it was crazy, yeah, everyone said I was insane. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to go anywhere, just go on the they street. Do. You can't. You have to like convince them that you're like their friend and then make them feel weird and then drop their self-esteem. Yeah, it was, all, it was all this, it's all the systemized BS that you had to do in, in a specific order and you have to do it in a nightclub or a bar. It would never work in the daytime. So no. and I was like, yes, it will. Without all the shit, let's just go in the day and do it. So yeah, everyone thought it was crazy and I, I always knew that it's gonna work. I want to tell you that you are 100% adorable. Thank you. Yeah. Thank um, you. I live in the hood here. Okay. We should flirt sometime. <laughs> well, I'm only here Saturday and Sunday. So mm -hmm. Okay. And where else are you the rest um, of the time? I work at a bartender at a karaoke bar in Midtown Manhattan. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, we'll meet one day before or after your work. We'll have a tea For or sure. something. I don't know. How okay. people, what do people do anymore? Yeah, tea. Yeah. All right, cool. I still remember the first the first piece of content we ever filmed. Maybe it was the next morning after we, we uh, you crashed after my house. night together. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and I had my uh, my big camera that I, I was excited about still. And I was like, let's let's do something for my YouTube channel. I just put it on your big snout and you you look younger then, less and more and more. I saw the video the other day actually, and you look so young and just, you just wore all the all this travel and all the ejaculations for thousands of times. So you, it's like it's like it drained something out of you. you you're like a boy. And uh, yeah, it was, and you were very much. Uh, it was just a. Uh, very nice. It was really exciting. I just put the camera in your face. It was quite a good chat as well. I remember it was quite good. If a guy's not good with girls, he can't. It's quite difficult for him to be able to move up, on completely. to the next thing. Yeah. You know, yeah, this yeah. is this is a vital area. We need to learn how to do this. And then I filmed one and I uploaded it. It's still, I think it's still up, and it's called uh, Clip 001.mp3. Are you serious? <laughs> you never renamed it? I didn't know how at the time. I was just like that. That clip of me and Sasha has always just been. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. The most important thing is the, the energy between me and the girl, just like having that genuine connection because I, I know what I like and I like girls who are fun. I can talk to them and joke around, just like, like I should be able to sit in a room for five hours with a chick and just talk, talk, talk and be and having fun. That's my thing. Uh, you have a phone number? 
And then you probably have Instagram too. I do. Yeah, and you probably look really good on it. Mm, better than now. Really? Because you look a hundred. I'm gonna say I, I hear your stuffiness, but you you looked cute enough for me to stop what I was doing and come over and say hi to you. <laughs> So. I, do, I walked over there to get good lighting for my makeup and then I saw you guys. Hey, what's up? How are you? Yeah. Uh, they're probably going to think I'm some creeper. But I'm not from here, so I thought it was cool. Yeah. And people just ran well, away. No, we all were like, wow, that cute girl keeps looking over here. That's what we saw. All right, John, cool. Hi. Yeah, I'm John. I'll text you in like, let's see. I'll text you when you're done your makeup. Okay, like 10 thank minutes. You. Okay. <laughs> thank all right, you. Bye. 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 Who's good meeting you? Great to meet you. <laughs> Have a fun day. Okay. Bye. See you. A lot of the early dating coaches were, their, their story, their origin story was kind of, I was a computer nerd guy mm. and I was lonely and I got no chicks and then one day I figured out the system by like sitting down and being scientific and then I went out and applied this scientific system to get chicks. <laughs> Not necessarily with that same kind of emotion but that's how I imagine it. Uh, none, of us, none of us were like that, none of us were computer nerds. Uh, I think we all had like girls in our life on and off throughout our life. Like, I mean, we had girlfriends, they weren't that hot always or not a bit annoying sometimes, but we sort of had women in our lives. Uh, so when we went out and decided to go and get really good at meeting strangers, we did it, I guess, in a very different way than a lot of the others. So, John, what was your process of like going from single, normal kind of guy, yeah. trying to make it in New York City to being a ladies? man yeah well it's interesting because for me i was here in new york city i did have a girlfriend and we had just broken up she was cute uh but she had a violent temper oh mm, it's sexy isn't it and uh it didn't match mine you know we were like you know it was just like <laughs> you <laughs> so, made it match yeah, yours a little yeah, too yeah, we, closely yeah, we had like uh, we just were not uh, compatible but i was desperately trying to hang on she's a great person i was desperately trying to hang on to her because she was so hot you know i was definitely you know, and how I met her was, is in my one little way I could meet her was, is I was an actor at the time. And I met her in an, in an acting workshop. And, you know, she was the one hot girl in the acting workshop, which then ruined that because, you know, now, now I got my, go the girl I'm dating course. in there, right? So, uh, so then we broke up and right away she was hot and she already had, you know, 10 more guys lined up. And I was just like, hey, some guy on the street and I'm living. It, it, who was sad and who was living in New York City and I even had, I really had no excuse not to have new girls. I would walk by thousands, tens of thousands of beautiful women every day, all of whom I would date, have sex with, marry, they were like this hot, you know? And yet I would go home every night alone. And it was causing me so much frustration. And unlike a lot of guys, I wasn't even locked in an office all day. I had a sales job outside. I was walking by them, I had no excuse. Beyond all this apprehension and fear I have with all these women, with any woman, is, is the real me. And that this is blocking me from true abundance. And that's stuff I was really into, learning about abundance. I had already started learning about uh, eating healthy. I'd already lost a bunch of weight. I'd already gotten like, uh, like in tune in a way. I didn't want to do nightclubs anymore. I wanted to meet really, you know, in New York what's cool is, is there's really interesting people. Beautiful, not just hot chicks, but really educated, driven, interesting. Fun, driven, crazy, quirky. Yeah, like the, like the creme. And I wanted to meet them. I wanted to know them. I wanted to date them. So I set this kind of ego-driven goal, which was is I will be known as one of the world's greatest ladies' men, and I wrote it down. And I, and I wrote down all these other goals. I'm gonna be a great writer. I'm gonna be known as this. I'm gonna be known as that. Uh, I didn't know how I was gonna do any of them, but I knew I, the one I started on right away was this. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna start talking to five women every day. I'm just gonna go up and I'm gonna say hi in some way and I'm gonna walk away. That's what I can do to break the ice within myself. So I'd walk up, I'd say, uh, I'd ask for directions and I'd just walk away. I'd walk up and I'd make some weird comment about her shoes and I'd walk away. And, uh, and then I just kept doing that. And then I got to the point where uh, I was like, okay, now I'm gonna try and transition into a conversation. But even there, I kept removing the pressure because I had no wingman, I had nobody. Anytime I tried to have a wingman, they fucked it up. Uh, I actually stopped hanging out with any friends that weren't into it. I never went to parties with people or in relationships or anything anymore. I became obsessed and I hit the streets day and night, like literally day and night, and then I even started going to bars all by myself, no drinking, nothing, just meeting people, getting past all these social phobias. Everything I think uh, isn't true. Like, I don't know what's going on, and I, and I found it out, like, oh, she's a bitch, I walk up, she's not. Oh, she wants me to leave, I ask her out, we end up on a date. Like, I had to find out by doing it over and over and over. 
And that's how I finally stepped in a super empowered state. Like I, be, I couldn't believe it, you know? And this went on for months. And then I got to, uh, I remember very specifically, I was dating more women, I was having sexual encounters, and then I thought, but still I'm not dating the, you know, the girls I thought I'd be dating. For like two, three weeks I just, you know what, it came over me like, you know what, it's okay. You don't need to try so hard. I still, I'm still here, I like being me. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be a famous actor apparently, and I'm not gonna be uh, the world's greatest ladies man, but here I am, and I still like me, even if all these people don't. And I just stopped, stopped trying, stopped talking to girls. I went about starting trying to write a screenplay. And one day, like three, four weeks later, I was sitting in a cafe, and I was doing, you know, working on this screenplay. And I lean over to her, and uh, there's a girl there, and I just start talking to her, like, like I didn't even think about it. And then uh, we just started having a conversation. I wasn't leaning in, I wasn't trying to plow through anything, I wasn't trying to force something, I wasn't trying to make anything happen. I wasn't trying to get her approval. I wasn't trying to prove anything to her. I wasn't trying to prove I'm the greatest, uh, look, I can do this. I was just there being me, and I started, you know, it was like we're playing a soft game of ping pong and was going back and forth. And that, I remember that so vividly because from that moment on I had discovered something totally new in myself. And I had then taken on, then that just was a, the big change in my whole life. And it wasn't too long after I started coaching other people. And one of the things I found along the way of, you know, meeting all these random people all the time is having, is, it's about really just, when it comes down to the social stuff, it's about two things. It's about energy exchange, that's really what we're doing. And it's really, it's not that you're meeting women. It's not like I'm going out to get laid today or I'm going out to find my girlfriend today. You can have that in your mind, but really what you're doing is you're going out and practicing being in the flow by meeting women. There's something so much bigger than getting any woman. Having a great experience with the most beautiful woman you ever had, it comes and it goes, even if it goes into a relationship. And what you'll find is, is Creating great friendships and relationships and connections with your friends is one of the most important things you'll have because these guys know me through it all. I just think you look really sexy today, so I just thought I'd come say hi. Oh, uh, thank you. Hello? Your style and my style look like we go together, like we, sh <laughs> we should be in a magazine cover, don't you think? So good. Wow, Thank but you, uh, you, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah, you good. Thank good you work. Good. You look good too. Oh, you yeah. So What's good. your name? Uh, Rita. Rita, nice Rita to meet you. You're a very beautiful person. Oh, no. Yes. No, you're a beautiful woman. Uh, you. You're beautiful. What are you? Uh, I'm just going to meet some friends. But what are you up to now? Uh, sorry, I have a boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> oh. You ruined my day. Oh All my right. God. Well, I love you I, anyway. Uh, Thank you. Oh, yeah. Have a good okay. one. You too. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Excuse me, miss. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Don't don't panic. I'm, I'm not crazy. You just walked by me. I just had to tell you, you look fantastic. <laughs> not just good looking, but very like you put an effort in. I don't. I'm lazy. I don't put an effort in. But I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate it when I see the effort. Oh, so that's it. What's your name? Sydney. Sydney. Hello, Sasha. Hello. I would hit on you, but I don't live. I don't live here. But if I lived here, I'd be like, "Hey, come get a juice with me. It'll be fun." But I don't live here. But you, I'm sure you have a boyfriend anyway. You have a boy. What? <laughs> How is that possible? I don't know. You tell me. Well, I hear this about New York that a lot of guys um, just don't have the time because a lot of guys are super businessy. A lot of gay guys. Oh, and then, true. and then, and then the online dating is kind of like not great. So there's a lot of beautiful single girls around. Yeah, yeah. What's been your experience? What's been your experience like? Uh, the gay part is right. The gay part is true. There's a lot of that. Um, a lot of wasting time. Mm. Yeah, most of it. It's been that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what excites you? What's your most fun thing to do? I don't know. I go to the movies. Let's say you inherited like five million dollars and you didn't have to work, right? You were I just travel. rich. You were so rich. I you travel. would you travel around. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're adventurous. Yeah. Nice. I'm same. <laughs> yes. I love it. The world is, uh, I love people who are, you know, adventurous enough to actually get the fuck out of their city. Mm. Well, well, you're a sweetheart. So what do you think? Should we, should we get a juice sometime? You're not from here. Yeah, but I'm always, I'm a global citizen. So I'm, o I'm always, you know, I come and go, I come and go. But, we have a juice? Sure. What if? What if? What if, what if we get along great? 
Who knows? If you're adventurous, I'm adventurous. Or we could just, we can just have, we had this beautiful moment and we part ways and, and that's it. It's also beautiful. Either way is okay. What do you think? You want to flip a coin? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, tea or no tea? Tea or no tea. Tea or no tea. You pick. I like tea, but I like coffee more. I'll do tea, you do coffee. Yes? I'll send you a text, mm -hmm. and if we make a, a tea happen, great. If not, not. But, uh, but I like meeting new people. Okay. Come here. Nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you, yeah. and uh, have a beautiful day. And uh, yeah, I'll send you like a not too, not too crazy text message. It's probably just gonna say, hi. Okay, I'll talk yeah. to you soon. Bye. Ciao. Sasha, on the streets talking to girls. Yeah. You, you guys think this is normal because you've seen videos of him, but he hasn't done that in ages. No, not so much. Yeah, it's actually amazing, right? And uh, you, you're uh, as good as ever, better than ever, because, I mean, what I'd witness, if I could say just you're energetically, you are without uh, any agenda whatsoever. You really enjoy uh, getting to know people. You yeah. really enjoy, like, being with people. You're curious about women. I really noticed that about you. You're really curious about people. You really, you know, you really want to share with them where you're at right now. And that's a huge, and that's why you make such deep connections now. I like people. Yeah, you like I people. like. I like getting to know people. I like helping people. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Do you want to touch uh, one again or not? No, nah, no, we'll see. Come on, let's, we'll see. let's, let's see, see, if see if you want to touch one. I don't know about you guys, but the way that I got into coaching was to try and get a few bucks to party. <laughs> at the time, I was obsessed with pickup, doing it all the time, but my plan was to leave Australia after a year of like just burying myself in hedonism and pussy and madness, and then go and become a monk in China. So, so I met this dude and he was like, well, why don't we you know, make a business, we can teach some dudes, and I'm like, we didn't know what we were doing, what does that mean exactly? It means go out at night and just bring the guy with us and then we'll, like see if we can get some money. So that was my initial motivation. It wasn't very like altruistic or I didn't feel like I was there to change the world. I was just like, well, I don't have a job. All I know how to do is play music. So maybe I can make some bucks out of this. Uh, so yeah, that's how it started. And the first couple of workshops were really, or the first half dozen or whatever workshops were literally me, me and my partner just going and partying, picking up girls and then kind of dragging a dude along and throwing him in. Uh, we had no idea what we were doing coaching wise, but yeah, gradually picked it up trial and error. At the time I got 90% of my, well, 10% of my validation from having sex with women and 90% from writing about it on forums mm. so that anonymous nerds could write, good job, you sure did pick her up good. Uh, so I had this very unhealthy thing where like a girl would be there, I'd have sex with her and the moment she'd leave, I'd run to my computer and write this field report about every single thing I said and did posted it on the online forums and that was where I started getting my fan base in the sense it was a dozen dudes who thought I was cool because I got laid and they didn't. Uh, and yeah, that was where I sort of started to infiltrate into the seduction community and, and then I realized I was better than the people in there even though I was looking for mentors and there wasn't any. And then I thought, maybe I can make a few dollars out of this. What about you guys? So for me, uh, I had been exposed years and years and years ago uh, through mystery. Meet the world's most successful pickup artist. Mystery. Sasha was Mystery's original wing, just for a little bit of extra funny oh, history yeah, yeah. in there. Back in yeah, the back in the old days. The late, they were talking in the late 90s. Oh, before, when Mystery was just Eric. And that's, that's like if they were making a movie of this whole thing, they'd fake that bit. They'd be like, oh, let's say that Sasha and him met like in 1998. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll make the story more interesting. <laughs> It'll make it more interesting. Uh, and basically, um, so the one thing I got from him was that this concept that you can actually go and approach women, right? Everything else I didn't like, all that it was doing magic and he was doing all this weird stuff. And, I, and I, I remember saying to him one day, we should just be able to talk to girls without the fake stories or the magic and, and hook up with them anyway. And he was like, no, that's never going to work. You got to use magic. He said that as a quote. That's never going to work. You have to use magic. Remember that, kids. But anyway, your so personality I, is not enough. That's not enough. So I, so I knew him back in the, in the old days and um, hadn't seen him for years. Um, I read the game. And I was really angry when I read the game because I was so... So how many years later is the game? That's like... So the game comes out, I think it's like 2005 or something no, like that. Or, or, I read it in 2006. So I think it came out I maybe... I think he's right, 2005 I think it was 2005. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I read this book and I, I still sucked with women. And I was getting my validation by telling jokes. I was doing comedy. The guys believe that, you know, if they see a beautiful woman, they can't just go over and introduce themselves. We used to kill bears for food. <laughs> hey, you want to go check that? Oh, fuck that. I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> but I was so, so bad with women. Just terrible. And I read this book and I was furious because I'm like, this guy is famous now and he's getting all these girls 
and he owes me money because I had lent him money back in the old yeah. days. And I'm like, he's got the money and pay me back now. He still owes you the money. Right? He still owes me the money. Well, mystery? Uh, come on. <laughs> How many? Come on. It's been but now he doesn't have it. Anyway, and so what happened was um, I decided I need to I need to fix this thing. This is not this is not acceptable. So uh, I ran into mystery again. He didn't give me the money, but he said there's this forum, the London Seduction Society. You should go check it out. Uh, and you can, in London, and you can meet all these cool guys who are also into this stuff. So I, I joined the forum, not only because I wanted to, you know, I desperately wanted to get better with women, but I thought if I get famous enough as, as uh, in the niche, in the pickup niche, then I'll be able to say to Mystery, hey, buddy, you better pay me my money, otherwise I'll tell everyone you're an asshole, and people will listen to me. Are you really yeah, 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 that was, my, wow, that was one of my motivations. I was like, I'm gonna wow. show this guy who's boss. Wow. And then I started posting, but, 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 but again, I, I hated nightclubs, I hated booze, all this stuff I hated. And I just had this insane idea one day where I'm like, I'm just gonna go hit on chicks and I'm gonna do it in the daytime, I don't give a shit. And I did it and uh, immediately started to work, like immediately, like immediately just on started getting the streets getting of London. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And so, so that started to work and then, so I was on this forum and again, same thing, like all these, I was getting all hundreds of guys commenting yeah. and like so, like, many, like, many, so many men who were like, like living vicariously through me having sex. I and had like uh, 20 comments. It was great. It was so good. It, it, it was a lot of fun. It really was a lot. That ego was really getting boosted yeah. up. Uh, and it was more about posting that I got laid than actually the sex of getting laid. It really was. It's Something like, like well. pumping the girl like, this is going to be great. This report, this yeah. thing, I should spank her more, make her scream. This is going yeah. to make it more interesting for later. Yeah. Uh, no, it was really fantastic. And um, so, yeah, so I was, I was doing that. And, uh, and, and how I actually got into coaching was so there was another guy who was quite known on this forum. And he was trying to uh, kind of, he was a style guy. He would make guys look really, really good and kind of help them in that way as part of his thing. And so he was trying to raise 100 British pounds to one or, one or 200 pounds basically to, to buy this guy who wanted to learn a, a, some clothes because this guy was broke. Yeah. And this guy was, and, and so and this coach was a friend of mine. So I thought, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer a day game. So if anyone wants to pay me 50 pounds to come out for, so I'll take two guys, 50 pounds each for a couple hours and I'll, t I'll teach him what I know. And I knew this would be a, a kind of a good way to start coaching and get some reviews without actually being like, hey, I want money. It was, I was doing it altruistically to help this guy. So I took to, two, to buy some dudes buy some, some dudes clothes because he's so dorky. Literally, literally. That's, that's uh, how it started for me. Now, there was something nice. Yeah. But I did it. We raised him the money. And I had a doctor, this Indian. I still remember the first two guys ever I coached. And, um, and they both did really, really well. And of course, I got reviews. They posted it up. And that was the beginning. And then I was like, all right, if people want to pay me money. And then it just kind of steamrolled from there. Imagine those, di those days back when you could hire us for a hundred bucks a night. Yeah, hundred bucks a night. Amazing. We were the yeah. cheapest hookers in town. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those cheap hookers do get expensive when they get popular. I'll tell you what. Um, so yeah, so that's the, the short version of how I sort of... Wait, how you got going? Well, how I got going, yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, at that time, I, I still was, you know, very similar to James and Sasha. I was an actor, and I wanted to, and it wasn't, and I was, I'd never wanted to work a sales job again. I couldn't do it. I literally said to myself, I'd rather die than do this. That's where I was at in my life, and I thought somehow, you know, the gods are supposed to open up and make me an actor, right? So, uh, but my buddy on the Upper West Side kept saying, you're so good. It was watching me like I was a magician. I was talking to girls, uh, 10 girls seating at a table. I was on fire. I could break the ice with anyone. I was like a storm going down the street. He was, couldn't believe it. He's like, you gotta teach guys that. I'm like, no, no, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna do Shakespeare. No, no, right? And then anyway, one day, after many months of him doing that, I said, all right, and he was very seedy. He's like, yeah, everybody just wants to get laid. That's all they want. I said, nah, that's not, that's not what they want. So I went online and I, I went to Craigslist. I'm, very, I'm not a technical guy. I went to Craigslist, and back then it was a real thing. Uh, it was about 2007. I went to Craigslist and I posted an ad that simply said, um, uh, awaken to your new reality, meet women anywhere and everywhere. And I called myself Awaken because I didn't know what was going to come at me. What? That was your ad? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. It sounds like something in an 80s movie where the guy finds like, awaken to your true power. Yeah, it was like oh, that. Oh boy. Yeah, I mean, I might have had a couple other sentences like, learn to meet her anywhere and everywhere, the spring is in the air, stuff like that. And I called myself awaken, right? Uh, and then they... Uh, Someone wrote to you? Yeah, Someone it was unbelievable because that was like a thing where all these forums were going on, which I was not a part of. And then the, this uh, guys came to me, and they were actually pretty cool New York guys. The first guy was like uh, a, a guy who worked for MTV, filming True Life episodes. Showed up, we went from one side of Central Park to the other side, 
and I just talked to like 10 girls in front of him and he gave me 100 bucks and he's like, you should call yourself amazing. And that was the beginning of me being a coach and then over time, I started to like, oh, how can I incorporate all these like life skills I've learned and all this other stuff and how can I make, I, I had no entrepreneurial skills either. How can I figure out how to make a program? At that point, people were giving me 100 or 300 bucks and then I said, I'll do like multiple sessions and I'll make them pay me all up front and then it started building on that. But it really just started, and, and it was always an idea, I'm just paying my way as an actor, until the day that the New York Times showed up. And that, uh, and then I'll, I'll end the story on this. So I had a friend, I was making my way, I was not working with anyone now, it was going on like a year and a half, and uh, another different friend said, why don't you put flyers up on, on the, the walls? And I'm like, I'm not doing that, that's crazy. right? So I put flyers up and down, the, actually the street over here. And in one hour, the city took him down. And the flyer said, there she is, bright and shining eyes, didn't say hi. Uh, there she is, standing next to you on a subway, didn't say hi, walking by you on the street, sitting next to you at a cafe, you didn't say hi, sounds like a long day. And I just put this new website that this guy helped me build. Right now, I got a website. And uh, the next day, uh, I, a guy from the New York Times contacted me and said, we've been looking for a guy like you. And then I said, I don't want to do it. I don't want my name and shit. I'm an actor. I literally sat dumb. I don't want my name or my picture in the paper. And then I decided to do it. And that just, besides being put out into the world as that guy, it just made me be like, hey, I guess this is my thing. And I really started focusing on it. You know? That's yeah. insane that somebody from the New York Times saw that. It was probably only up a few hours. It was an they hour. Took it down. Yeah, they yeah, took it down. That's yeah, it's insane. It was that's, like, that's I, insane. and I would say just spiritually, I was for the eight months, I was going to like a special woman who was like a special kind of hypnotist to get rid of all my dark energy. And the whole thing was literally to focus on uh, there's nothing more important than feeling good. As long as I keep doing that, amazing things will happen for me. And that's uh, the true story to this day. And I keep remind, I remind myself that every morning. So I, I, have a, I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Um, what's one thing that you think now is absolutely critical to what you do, but you actually didn't realize was even important back when you were getting started with the taking? I mean, you look confused. I can tell you what it is for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. for, me uh, for me, it was that I wasn't doing it, and then I started doing it. Yeah, yeah. Now you know you can do it. Yeah. Um, for me, it was, uh, I didn't even know this concept existed. For me, it's, it's social freedom. That was the yeah, most important thing. Because right. I just thought it was just about having the balls and going, going over and how to flirt and how to do all these things. But actually, when I just uh, felt comfortable enough doing what I want to do, when I just stopped caring what people thought, and I was able to express myself without fear of judgment, that's what changed it for me. And that was, the, that was the key component for me. When I really, really, really stopped giving two shits what people thought, then I, I, then I could run up to anyone and do anything. And the rest kind of fell into place. That's it's funny that isn't it because it's like I wouldn't say that's that's not my like guiding principle because maybe I still do care about what people think more than you do sure definitely more than you do <laughs> uh, you know I don't just whip my shirt off in the middle of a wedding or whatever like you would because um, you feel a bit hot yeah. and, you wanna, and you feel a bit hot so you yeah. thought you'd just take your shirt off in the middle of the wedding sure. I don't walk through Rio de Janeiro with uh, six day old un bunched up underwear pull pulling out of my pants while I have no shirt on <laughs> saying hi to people like you do but I, you know. yeah but it's but i think my definitely one of my guiding principles is freedom and that, and that's i guess i've done it in different ways for me it wasn't so much about like the social pressures on me it was more around like i want to navigate the world from a per place of freedom so that all my choices were net were not based on either fear or obligation or things i had to do or people expected me to do it was that i wanted to be able to find my own path and that led, led me through different areas, whether that was creatively music, taking business risks, uh, not getting a normal job, and then when I got into seduction, that that was something where I was like, oh, this is the ultimate freedom for me as a man, because it means that I actually have choice now. Like I'm not, the things that I hated was living in, in yearning, in regret, in scarcity, and feeling like I just couldn't, that there were certain things that were not Available but but what me. I'm curious about, like, what's one thing that now you think absolutely like this is so important, but back then you didn't even know about, it. you didn't even realize it was important, and now you're like super important. Um, probably the, phys the physical game. Like when I first started out, I, I had a, some advantage that I'd done a lot of meditation before, so th my principle of awareness was with me all the time, and that is my base principle of like everything I've. I've done since then, teaching seduction, everything else comes from that. So that was always there, but I think it was. 
uh, yeah, recognizing that the dialogue between men and men and women is mostly non-verbal because I used to talk too much and think too much. And so, so when, when I allowed things to be more simplified and to recognize that what I have is enough, that I don't need to be clever, I don't need to prove myself. Uh, I, I do need to improve myself, but that because I want to be better and more and, and more at ease with myself, but where I'm at now is okay. And what I, and I have what it is that a woman wants if she's you know if she's at least interested in me, which is that she wants the comfort, the sex, the sensuality, the the feeling my power, the eroticism, all of that stuff. So I think when I became more sensual and less cerebral, that that shifted a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of things popping in my mind. One thing is is that uh, that my instincts were more powerful than my mind. That my instinct to want to connect with people, uh, what I realized, what it used to feel like is that it was dirty or it was bad or I was up to no good or I was being <laughs> creepy. But I, and, and I used to also feel like women were some alien species. You know, even though I had known women, I felt like all these women that I desired and didn't know were somebody other than me. And uh, and I used to have to, and I felt for a long time like I had to force it to make it happen. I had to force it. I had to prove it. I had to keep trying as hard as possible. And then when, then it got really uh, the real understanding is that it's not a forcing it. It's a, it's an allowing. It's that it's simply just my job to create a, as the man to create the condition uh, by taking the risks to initiate various sequence of events over and over that allow, and then just allow perhaps a connection to happen between us and that I can't force it but what I can do is, is I can uh, take all these risks that create this condition for boy and girl to connect. The more I started connecting and loving myself and just feeling like I'm okay, I'm yeah. actually an okay guy and people like me. That just gave me the freedom. So, 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 I, so it's it's all comes down to the relationship with the self, and a big part of that is caring what people what people think, which <laughs> doesn't make any difference. It's what you think about you. So that shift, and the more I, I think it's an ongoing process, because as we get older, we actually get more and more like I feel you guys are more solid in your being now than when I met you seven years ago. You guys, you guys are more, so much more you than you were in every way. So and now I get it when older people are like, yeah, it's great when you get older. It actually is great yeah. <laughs> until you yeah. get really old, and yeah. say, then it's bad. But at this point, it's really good, it's really great. because. Um, because yeah, so that relationship with the self for me, that's really the thing. It's interesting that thing though, the, like being the man of your age. It's like when you're, because we're now we're old cunts, uh, except for one Tinder where we're like 26. Um, <laughs> but you know, when you're in your 20s, that, that I think that's, it's right in a way to be uncertain, to be trying to prove yourself, to be, and, and that, that's gonna come out in different ways. Like for all of us, it came out in egotistical ways, mm -hmm. wanting to get attention. You know, you wanted to be an actor, a comedian, a musician. Uh, you know, we wanted to get accolades from, from disciples, from girls, from whatever else. And uh, in a way, that was like the passion fire of the, young, of the younger man who's like actually trying to find his way in the world. And so it's like, I, I'm sympathetic to that. At the same time, we've seen ourselves and, and other people way worse get lost in that, where it's like the proving yourself never ends. The egotistical thing, uh, you know, need to show that you're worthwhile to the outside world never, never stops. And so I think like looking at a trajectory of a, of a lifetime for a man, it's like a hero's journey. Okay, cool, go through that period when you're, when you're a young, arrogant or doubtful or self-doubting man. And there is something attractive about a man at that age, even if he's not okay with himself, but he's okay with not being okay with himself. You know, in the James sense that like... Dean, you know, he was 24, but he was tormented and tortured yeah. and all those things. Were yeah, and it's, and, and like, that, yeah. you know, I, know I, I knew seducers who were like dead broke, had their lives in shambles, but girls loved them because they were okay with themselves, even though they were like, yeah, well, what am I doing right now? Nothing much, I'm fucked up and I'm on drugs, but you know, that's what I'm doing. And the girl would accept him for who he was at the time. I'm not saying they should be on drugs and, and lying in a gutter. Um, but the being okay with yourself thing is a process of uncovering. It's like, I'm more okay with myself than I was, but at that time, there was times when I was becoming okay with the fact that I was flawed. And, the, and that other go and women would see that and they were like, okay, cool, he's a, he's a 20 year something guy who's getting his shit together gradually, he's got, these, he's got these issues, but he's passionate and he's fiery and he's got this other stuff that attracts me. So, you know, overall it's an attractive package. Yeah, yeah uh, just riffing on that, it's like, yeah, I'm still, I feel great about myself most of the time, but there's always something I'm chipping away at, you know, and that's that balance of always finding self-love and acceptance. And the more you live in that place, uh, it's the more it is your resting place. But I, just taking what you said and bringing it into relationships. So I remember being, you know, getting me so good and, you know, then dating the women that I had dreamed that I would date. And I still remember my, that I still wanted her approval so bad that I wasn't voicing my concerns about what was going on between us mm -hmm. and just biting my tongue, biting my tongue, mm -hmm. biting my tongue and uh, not being, uh, not, and that was it. So I had become authentic to a degree 
but I wasn't. Now that now the authenticity stopped, and I was biting my tongue when I should have been talking, and 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 uh, and I wasn't honoring my relationship my, myself. Myself was saying, "Dude, this isn't right. This something's not right. You got to fix this." And then I was just like, "Well, I don't want to. You know, I don't want her not to like me. I don't want that." Basically, she's so hot that I'm yeah, willing to yeah, put up with yeah. quite a lot. And uh, and, and uh, because I did that, uh, the, the relationship ended anyway and even and, and way more violently and way worse and and so much more pain and suffering than if i had just said honored myself the whole and, and that relation with myself isn't just oh i like me all the time it's like a constant thing where you're having to check in with, with what's true with you you know that's so that, that's something i really discovered along the way shall we uh, take it inside well, gentlemen my truth right now is yeah. that it's cold and i've got a cold and i want to go in out of the cold yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's and do i must it. honor thine Let's truth do it. we got a nice honor thine friend. yeah so all of us independently around 2005, 6, 7, 8, I guess, were running around the streets of uh, London, New York, and, and Melbourne. And I guess like figuring out our, our missions, like why we're doing this, getting a philosophy around this, kind of throwing ourselves out into any social scenario, but none of us had a, any roadmap or any mentors particularly. We'd all like whatever read the game or checked out some other stuff and decided it wasn't for us. There was so, no mentor. No, there wasn't anyone around. There were some other guys trying to figure it, figure it out that I, I bumped into. But what I want to know from you guys is, like, what was the internal process like of taking something that was just purely chaotic? You had your thing of go and talk to five girls a day. You were just running up and telling them they're hot. Uh, you know, my thing was just, that, okay, I'm just going to interact and, and take any invitation and, and just start talking to girls. So none of us had any clear, like, system, mentorship or roadmap. So how did you guys go about starting to pull some kind of structure or navigational tools to be able to maneuver through this idea of natural game? You know, the idea that we didn't have a script, we didn't, we weren't trying to run some, uh, you know, routine on the girl. We were going in there and trying to vibe. But obviously, all of us now have taught this for many years. Mm. It's not just like be yourself, be natural. You know, go with the flow. We have systems. So how did you guys go about developing those? Um. For me, the system sort of uh, evolved uh, from my personality because the only thing I was doing at the time when I got into this stuff, I was actually a stand-up comedian. So being funny just was my thing. I just was funny all the time making jokes. So when I started going out there and um, talking to girls, obviously I was being funny as well. So I started coming up with things that I could do or say that would get a reaction and get girls to laugh. And that, that kind of was my door in. Have you seen my biceps? Do you want to, do you want to just have a little? I relied on it a bit too much because I was just, I was just that funny guy and mm -hmm. very few girls, some girls would just like me for that and others would be like, oh no, this guy's a clown or whatever. But, uh, as I moved forward, I realized actually, if you are able to give girls an emotional reaction of some kind that actually gets their attention and from there I was able to just pick up patterns and, and, and learn new things uh, and then I got into social freedom and, and a little bit flirting and you know everything I did was always based on fun and being in the moment so even when I was um, you know quite seriously trying, trying to get a girl's number and I really wanted to go out with her um, the interaction would always be based on fun so I always be making fun of the girl or making fun of myself or being silly and so even when I came up with like okay you have to do this this step this step this step it was always rooted in being fun in the moment because that's the only way I could be. I couldn't not be fun. You couldn't say to me, Sasha, go try to but don't be funny at all. Don't be fun at all. Be super serious. Like we did that once. Yeah, we, yeah, we did yeah. that once. That you did it for an hour. Oh, that's right. Video, but, you know, that's where you guys went switch really roles. Make, <laughs> I really had to make an effort. Yeah. Um, so, so it really you think started. you had to make an effort? I had to go. <laughs> okay, little lady, what's up? <laughs> that, that was I was recovering for weeks. Okay, do you want to feel my bicep? I like your sunglasses. Do you like my sunglasses? Yeah. Really. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, 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 it was sorry. the most fun you've uh, pretended to have in, in months, mm. no, wherever. <laughs> um, but basically, yeah, so for me, eventually I did come up with systems like here's how you throw, here's how you exit, all, all these things, but it always came from that initial being a little bit bold, jumping in front of a girl, saying something fun or crazy, um, and just to really get someone's attention and to solidify that, hey, here I am, you can't ignore me, uh, while having a really good time. So for me, fun mm -hmm. was always the, the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. If you're having fun going out there and taking chances, from there, all the systems kind of just formed after that. Yeah. What about you, John? Yeah, for me, it's interesting because we, we, just to go back and talk about mentor, mentorship, and you know that uh, even though I didn't, I, I I didn't have a specific guy training me. I had learned from some world's great acting teachers. I had learned. I had studied with shamans. I had uh, studied psychology. 
uh, and I had one older charismatic friend who I watched walk into Whole Foods and uh, down the streets and light up the streets and I couldn't believe it. He didn't know how to teach me or he didn't want to, but I kept watching him and that showed me that it was possible. Mm -hmm. I saw the possibility then. And um, that set me forth. But along the way, the systems, what I really discovered was is that there's, uh, I liked meeting people in everyday places, the cafes, the bookstores, uh, the, these little, you know, uh, sitting next to them on the subway. And I started to find um, that you had to be subtle, that, that, that I could, couldn't always, like, on the streets, completely anonymous. But if I was in these places, I had to be subtle and transition subtly. So I started to learn that, and I started to learn that even the doing of it, like just like waving at someone's easy, uh, saying hi is just, you know two uh, two letters and one syllable. It's easy transitioning and saying and making an observation about somebody. For me, became easy, but that's what I started to realize was hard for everyone else. No mm. one else was present. They weren't paying attention. Well, so, they were paying attention to the wrong things, listening to the details, or getting caught up on facts that don't matter. Right, and and or or thinking that the answer was always in their head. Mm -hmm. So the system really became simple. It became a series of six beliefs that I came up, which was which was uh, follow your instincts, uh, it, your intentions are good, uh, it's okay if people don't like you. Essentially, sometimes they're misunderstood. It's your job to take all the risk. It's not personal. It's as personal as a bird in a flying south for the winter. And it's the most important job in the world, the job of the connector. And I instilled that in these guys. Like, this is what you practice doing. You practice believing this. And then you practice engaging your observations. Mm. You practice seeing the world around you, seeing the colors people are wearing, seeing the way people walk and move. And then you understand that the answer is never in your head. It's always out on them. Mm -hmm. So without getting into every little thing, I started to realize that was the cornerstone of my teaching. And that then it came down to two energies, playfulness, which means being lighthearted, easygoing, and it can manifest as as Sasha is as funny as Sasha can be or is super quiet and playful to and then the other energy was that I discovered that really led to the connection was sincerity often you know being a real guy just talking uh, uh, and that's something we all found along the way to really make connections yeah you can be funny or you can be playful or silly but in order to really connect with enormous amounts of people and make meaningful connections I had to be sincere, and that meant I had to talk about myself, which I hated doing because I was an actor living in a hoarder's lair, <laughs> and I was a hell of a lot more charismatic than that than my than my uh, my house was interesting. You know? <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, but uh, and so that and therein lies the path that we all found, which is coming to self acceptance. Mm. So, so the systems came out of f helping guys get to the place where they can be self loving, self acceptance of themselves, no matter where they're at, no matter what's going on with them and understanding that that's the core to being attractive. And then, um, and then of course, engaging the world around them by using their observations. Mm. And that, that's kind of the system I came out Interesting. So it's funny how we've like all, all come to like similar principles, but we have them from different, different angles or different yeah. interpretations. Like for me, it was, I was really obsessed with breaking down the game of the, of the eventual naturals that I met. And I met about four or five guys who were exceptionally good, kind of naturally in the sense that they were self-taught. Um, but they all did things in very, very different ways. And I was fascinated by one guy who seemed to do very, very little and draw women in like a vacuum. And that's where I sort of, sort of started observing what, is, what are the things that he does in terms of like he gives a bit of attention and then he draws it away. His energy is super engaging and then it's super cold. Uh, you know, he, he gets girls to do things for him all the time, just little things, they're always like clamoring it. And I just started figuring, and from there started seeing this concept or this principle of pressure release in action as this, as this guy wasn't doing much, but the, he'd amplified his effects through the leverage he created uh, by putting pressure on somebody and by, and by holding the authority to validate, right? which was a new thing for me. I was like, well, I'd always been friendly and given people a lot in terms of being encouraging and uh, helpful and not, not wanting people to feel uncomfortable. And then I saw from that guy, okay, this is this uh, mentality and behavior and it creates this effect. And I see there's a principle. And then I started seeing crossovers with my other friend who was like a, a night, night game, dance floor trigger puller, very charismatic, very physical, um, but he was using different type of pr pressure in terms of his eye contact and his use of touch and release. And then I'm like, okay, there's these crossovers where this principle, actually every seducer is using it in the, and really many, many different artists of all sorts. And the, so that was my obsession in those early days to like pinpoint these 
universal laws that, that seem to be applicable across the board. People call them different names, people don't call them anything because they're just like, I just do it. Um, okay. But that's how I, I started to pull out, out of this chaos of like naturalness or, or, or people who are charismatic or people who are seductive and see, okay, these are these uh, elements that they all share and then they run them through the, the filters of their personality and they mutate and go out in all these fantastic different ways. The, one of the key words you said right there is that it's an art. It's an art form. You know, there's some uh, things that's, that are universally true, but um, it's always an art. And in an art, that's, you have to always be present, super present. And then, so that's, uh, so that's why it never gets old and it never gets boring. We're constantly exploring. Yeah, because there's like only a finite number of colors, but the infinite ways of blending them and using them. That's yeah. the thing. You understand the principles of the colors and the principles of the brush strokes, and then, okay, you can go off and take it in any direction you want. Uh, as we all have many different directions. Yeah. Where's your, where's your next direction? So uh, tomorrow I'm I'm leaving New York. Tomorrow I'm going off to Portugal to become an olive farmer. Yes. Sasha, yeah. you're you're heading to Ecuador soon. What's going on? I'll be going to Ecuador to uh, run a restaurant. <laughs> What's fun? going on with us? Open yeah. mic night. <laughs> Open uh, mic night restaurant uh, in meditation. Ecuador Ecuador yeah. village. Focusing on meditation, going deeper within the self. Well, that'll be a funny uh, uh, comedy set. That one. Which one? The one where you go deep within yourself. This is the guy who went on a 10 day Vipassana. And then I think. Was it the ninth day? Right. Yeah. Because you were farting on people or something? I was just making people laugh, yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to do yeah, that in I the monastery. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Now you can do it. You can, you can make all that. Now, now it would be very different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But yeah, working on the soft is my main thing. Yeah. Mm. That's great. For me, I'm here in New York, at least for the next couple of months. Uh, working coaching, uh, working on creative stuff around the coaching and mm. really just enjoying my life. I enjoy it here. In the winter time, I'm, I may visit you, I may visit you. I don't know what, what I'll be doing this during Well, that's the thing, we have the choice. Yeah. Excellent. All right, well, this has been the Grandfathers of Day game, getting together for a little retrospective. Oh, you're yeah. running your little restaurant? I've gone, gone I bought a farm. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, Keegan's the only one who's still, yeah, like, in a major gone. metropolis yeah. r running after women. And, I mean, I, I sneak I into the metropolis when I gotta do stuff. So yeah. I've got, like, an infinite yeah. man, so I'm an event. I'll come in, I'll do the thing, then I'll just get out. I like to be out in nature. Mm. Mm. I'll yeah. come in, yeah. and I get out. Yeah. yeah. Well, we made him stay a little longer this time. Yeah, it's I been mean, fun. It's it was fun. Yeah, I like it. We should go and get a borscht or something now. Yeah, let's do it. Borscht. Borscht. Sasha Day game. Do, what do I even call? I can't not call you Sasha Day game. I'm, re, I'm, re, I'm actually just going to make it Sasha Day. I like it. Sasha, I like Sasha Day. Of the Sasha day. day. Sasha, Sasha of the Day. day. Isn't that better? It's a Sasha great day, day when you're Sasha Day. Yeah. Sasha Day Walker? Yeah, or Sasha no, of the Day. I don't want it to be like, like Pinkerty. No. Day game's Sasha, day Sasha, like Sasha, Sasha Day Ray. How about Day Ray. Oh, Day Ray. Sun Ray. Date Ray. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll work on it. Yeah. You guys can put we'll something in the comments if you want to re rebrand Sasha. Yeah. Uh, I'm still James Marshall, still John Keegan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Excellent. Thanks for, thanks for being on the journey. We love you. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed that nostalgic trip down memory lane with the old granddaddies of day gaming. Uh, if you're new to this channel, you might be thinking, who are those dudes? But if you're an old school fan, you know. You know who Sasha Daygame was before he was Sasha Health Eating Fruit Guy and John Keegan, the legend of the streets of New York City. Uh, I've been on countless adventures with these gents, uh, learned a huge amount from them as we explored lifestyle design, travel, business, and of course seduction together, not seducing each other, well, a little bit, mostly seducing women near each other. Uh, and it was always fascinating for me to see how men who were excellent at this art form had discovered the universal principles on their own in their own unique way. Uh, all of these master seducers understand that seduction is not about tricks and techniques, not about hustle and being cocky. It is about understanding the core engines of what create attraction. Speaking of which, the five principles of natural seduction legacy edition is open for enrollments right now and only open for a few more days. As part of this course, you will get two in-depth interviews with the Al Grandad Sasha Day game whatever he's known as now, and John Keegan, as well as a huge bunch of other bonus modules. There's over 50 hours of exclusive material. This is my final brain dump of everything seduction related. So if you'd like to join me and a bunch of guys from all around the world on this journey to get your dating life sorted this year, then click the link below, check out the info, and I'll see you in the course.